Mechanism drive equations can feel like black magic. They say that magicians aren't supposed to reveal their secrets, but I'm breaking that rule today. I mean, how does simply adding, subtracting different motor powers actually make your robot glide sideways or even spin in place? So by the end of today's video, you'll have a fundamental understanding of how mechanism drive works and how to program a robot to drive omnidirectionally. I'm Brogan Pratt, and with over a decade in robotics education, I've helped countless students grasp these core concepts. So today, I'm going to break down exactly how to think about your wheel orientation in that classic X mechanism setup. Then we'll step through why these equations combined together create movements like forward, reverse, strafing, and diagonals using some clear practical examples to make it all click. Let's go get started. So let's start by taking a look at a picture of what a robot might look like in the space first. We're going to have the front of a robot up here, and we'll have four wheels on this robot. And our robot, respectively, we're going to have front left, front right, rear left, and rear right. And we're looking at this robot. When you look at a mechanism wheel, it's really important to know that there are the 45 degree rollers. And when we're looking at the top down on the robot, we want these rollers to be facing inwards to be sort of making an X shape pattern. So let's go ahead and draw in some of those rollers. So we have a nice X shape pattern. So I'm looking at the angle of those rollers. You can see that it makes a sort of imaginary X as we go along. So let's break down the movement with just one roller at itself. Because we've got these rollers on that wheel that go down a 45 degree angle, as I try to move a one wheel forward, it's actually going to try to move diagonally with itself as well. So for instance, if we take this front left, it's going to apply a forward velocity of its roller forward, and it's also going to try to apply a velocity to the right because those 45 degree rollers are moving. So we'll say that our forward velocity is going to be blue or our y velocity and then the same thing with the force on our x-axis or our horizontal motion our horizontal or our x-axis is going to be showing up in red so this wheel here is actually going to be as we move just one wheel it's going to try to move forward or it's going to try to move up to the top right on a diagonal because that is the combination of both of our x and y axis forces so in order to make one of these move forward directly forward we need to cancel out that horizontal motion so if this is the front left motor moving full forward if we take the front right motor and do the same thing if we move the front right motor forward it's going to want to try to move up and diagonally to the right it's going to try to pull in because the way that these, real, these rollers are moved, it's going to try to roll itself towards these rollers in that kind of motion when we're moving forward. And again, we're going to have a negative force on our x-axis, but again, a positive force on our y-axis. And if we add all these forces up, let's just say for easy math, we just have a simple 1.0 and a simple 1 and negative 1 for our math. We add up both of these, our y velocity is going to be 1 plus 1. We've got a positive y velocity and for our x velocity we have one plus negative one we'll end up with zero so those forces actually end up canceling itself out so we won't actually move into our robot we'll end up moving forward let's break it down into the typical types of controls that you're going to need so if i look at a standard controller you typically have a left joystick and a right joystick on one of these controllers and the right hand joystick is going to control that forward and back with forward or throttle. We're probably going to have a x-axis on the same thing. And this one I usually like to call strafe. Then the x-axis on the left joystick is actually going to control our rotation. So we're left with three different inputs. The right joystick forward and back will control our forward and reverse motion. The right joystick, left and right, will control our strafe. And then our left joystick is going to control the actual rotational space. So in this equation, we're going to have forward is going to be black. We're going to have strafe in red. And we're going to have 
rotation in blue. So let's break down into our four motors because we need to send four different individual motor commands. So I'm going to have forward left power, forward right power, rear left power, and rear right power. And how our equation goes is we add in different values or subtract in different values of our forward value, our strafe value, and our rotational value. So thankfully, sorting this all out mathematically is actually not all that complex. You simply just have to add or subtract your different values for your forward and your strafe and your rotation. We're going to assume that each of these runs from negative 1.0 all the way up to 1.0 as a normalized value. Now for our front left motor, we simply add all three of our values together. So we end up with forward value plus our strafe value plus our rotational value is going to equal our final output for our front left motor. For our front right motor, we're actually going to subtract these values. So we're going to take our forward value, subtract our strafe value, and subtract our rotational value. For our rear left motor, we're going to subtract strafe, but add our rotational value. And for our rear right motor, we're going to add our strafe and subtract our rotational value. Now, just talking about all this doesn't really make a lot of sense. I'll actually go ahead and actually let's do a quick example here. So the simplest one is let's assume that all of our motors, we just want to move forward. So we just want to move all of our motors forward so our rover drives. I'm going to give a forward value of 1 because on our joystick, that's the equivalent of pushing all the way up on the right joystick. We have a zero value of strafe and a zero value of rotation, which means that if we were to put all this math out, we end up with a full value of one on all four of our equations. And we'll have front left, front right, rear left, and rear right. All four motors will end up moving forwards. Same is true if I were to make these negative and I want to move backwards. Obviously, negative one for everything is going to end up with a negative one value, and that's going to cause us to move directly backwards. So let's assume now that we want to strafe to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in a forward value of zero for everything. We're going to have a strafe value of one because we're all the way to the right and a rotational value of zero. So in order to strafe to the right, what's going to be happening is we're going to add all these up, one. So zero minus one is negative one. Same thing here on our rear left and our rear right is actually going to end up being positive one. So in order to strafe our robot to the right, we're going to move our front left forward. We're going to move our rear left backwards or negative one. So now what is happening is as I'm moving this one backwards, these two forces on our x axis want to move this way, but our y axis is canceling those forces out. So as this wheel is spinning forward, this wheel is spinning backwards, that's your cancellation force there. And that's going to end up strafing your robot to the right. Same is true on if I wanted to move all the way to the left. Let's go ahead and flip this over to a negative one value on all these. That's going to flip our equation here. And we're going to end up with a positive negative on our front left and our front right. So now these two motors are going to be wanting to switch their directions and they're going to be forcing against each other on the y axis but with each other on the x axis and that's going to produce a strafing to the left movement now let's say we want to rotate a robot clockwise or spin it in place We're going to go ahead and do zero on our forward and zero on a strafe, but we're going to give a full value to our rotational value this time. So now I end up with a positive for the front left, a negative on the front right, a positive on the rear left, and a negative on the rear right. So translating that over to our wheels, our front left is moving up on the y axis and right 
on the x-axis because these rollers are going to want to try to move forward diagonally that way. Our rear left, though, now moving up on the y-axis, but left on the x-axis because it's going to want to try to follow where these rollers are going. And the same thing is true for our other motors. Our front right is actually going to be moving backwards now. So we're actually moving down on the y-axis and down on the y-axis for both, but we're moving right on this side and left on that side. So if we combine all these forces together, this is going to cause us to want to turn or rotate around. The last one we'll talk about practically here is the ability to be able to move diagonally. So in this case, we're going to be strafing up and to the right. So we're going to have no rotational value here because I want to be strafing. I'm actually going to add a half value to these other ones. So I'm going to add half a value for forward and half a value for strafe. So if I go ahead and run these equations out, our front left is actually moving at a full value of 1. Our front right is going to be at a value of 0. Our rear left is going to be moving at a value of 0. And our rear right is going to be moving at a value of 1. Our front right and our rear left are not moving at all when it comes to move diagonally. So let's actually see how that goes ahead and plays out. So our front left motor is going to be moving forward, which means it moves up on the y-axis and right on the x-axis. And then our rear right motor is also moving forward. So we're going to move up on the y-axis and right on the x-axis. And if we look at how these forces are all applying, well, of course, our x-axis is going to move together, our y-axis are going to add up together. So we end up with a net front right velocity. To summarize, it's just taking in three input values. Your forward or your y-axis on the right joystick, your strafe or the x-axis on that right joystick, and your rotation, your x-axis on your left joystick. You add up or subtract in various equations to be able to move your front left, your front right, your rear left, and rear right motors at different values. So once you've got your normalized equation in, uh, from negative one all the way up to positive one, it should be pretty easy for you to be able to turn this into actual movement in your motor. If you'd like to learn how to do this in Python or CircuitPython, I've got a video in the description down below. Otherwise, best of luck transferring this into your uh, coding language of choice, and uh, good luck on your next robotics project.